call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Jeremiah 33rd chapter, the third verse. That's a good verse. Good it's chapter. A good verse. There's we could we could probably do a program just on that one verse. Probably <laughs> could. Well, my name is uh, Bob Butler. I'm uh, with Gopi and Praise Fellowship, uh, ordained through World Ministry Fellowship out of Dallas, Texas. The same as uh, my co-host Kevin <laughs> Kendall Hetrick, Reverend Kendall Hetrick, and uh, Reverend Jerry Kanak, who's not with us in this series particularly. Uh, he's in the series, but not in these particular programs. Uh, He's out chasing rabbits doing something else, I guess. Uh, we're making this whole series uh, kind of commentary teachings based on a book that we're publishing called What Are You Planting? Good Seeds or Weed Seeds? And it has to do with the Word of God, our speech, uh, our spiritually growing up as a Christian, uh, how we're living as a Christian, are we blessed or are we always being contended with it by the devil and everything we do uh, and all of these things and we went through the first chapter which is the name the same as the book title and the second chapter we just finished in the last program is called uh, what goes in will come out and that has to do with with what we talked about you know what are you seeing what are you hearing Jesus said watch what you hear watch what you see and only put those things in your memory banks and and just don't when something evil is going around, get away from it. Uh, in one of the programs, we used the example of the guy that was going in the tavern. He said, I'm going in there to witness. Well, he really wasn't going in there to witness. He was going in there to participate with the sinners of the area. He had a, a, a addiction or something that he hadn't overcome, and he was using that as an excuse. But the fact was, he was putting in to his spirit, man, the wrong stuff. Uh, and I don't know where he was as a as his level of Christianity went, but uh, it obviously could have been better. It probably could have been better, yes. <clears throat> so we're ready to start chapter three then. Yes. Which is sowing, growing, and harvest. Well, as a farming person that you are, this chapter probably means uh, that that heading would mean a lot more to you than somebody raised in the city. Sure. What do you mean, sowing, growing, and harvest? Uh, and, and this year we could add get receiving rain. And, and <laughs> Need rain harvest. for the growing. Yes. Uh, and, and that's one of the, that's one of the problems that we see, I believe, in so many Christians, and we'll maybe we'll probably touch on it as we go through, is there is no rain uh, on that which is sown, and so consequently it doesn't produce much of harvest, and or there's not much water on it. To, uh, even in a good year, we water our garden yeah. uh, so that there's a constant uh, supply of water for the things. Uh, a matter of fact, in our particular area, when we moved uh, into uh, the place, the, the house that we just uh, started, we we had a little bare spot out there, or a spot where they'd had gardens, so we stirred it all up and we started raising a garden. And uh, since we've started raising a garden now, about all of our neighbors around have, be have begun <laughs> to raise a garden. And, and the one neighbor uh, had started a garden, uh, had a garden last year, and, and they watched their garden, and they watched our garden, and they watched us water and, and fertilize, and they watched their garden. And this year they began to water and fertilize. <laughs> and, uh, and they have a, a, that now they've decided we had altogether too much stuff in our garden. Or last year they said our tomato plants was only like this, and now they're all over the place. <laughs> and we said that's what water and fertilizer will do. Sowing, growing, and harvest. <laughs> and, and allowing the Spirit of God to work on that which is sown in our lives will we'll do the same thing in us. Yes. Go ahead if you want to start through here, and when we, we stop somewhere and discuss some of it. Some of it will be repetition, which we already know. That's the teaching technique. It also brings out different aspects of the verses. Uh, verses mean more than just one thing, mm -hmm. and we can glean from that. Sowing, growing, and harvest. The very first thing you do to get a harvest is sow. You cannot get a harvest until something is sown or planted. Mark, the fourth chapter, the 14th verse says, The sower soweth the word. The word is Jesus. We are reading the word here, and it has to do with spiritual things. We can sow both on the spiritual side of life and on the physical side of life. In the springtime, people start thinking about getting out and having a garden. They're going to plant seeds in their gardens, and they're expecting a harvest when those seeds grow and mature. God does too. As we sow the word of God, we expect that word to grow. 
We expect his word to grow in the people's hearts into whom we have sown it, and we expect it to come to harvest, to maturity, to ripen. And Mark, the fourth chapter says, The sower soweth the word, and these are they which by the wayside, where the word is sown, when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word which was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things, entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. Now what we're going to get into here is a little bit about... Uh, and you, you you mentioned I'm glad your example that you start off with because that's just that's just good. When you sow a garden, there has to be preparation made uh, in the area you're going to have your garden. It has to be preparation made in the person where the sowing is going to take place. Uh, you, in, in fact, Jesus is talking about it here. When when you can sow seed in the ground that has been prepared fertilized and cultivated and done all the things you need to do to it before you put the seed in there. Mm -hmm. It gives the seed a, a better opportunity to germinate and grow into maturity than if you just throw it out in the garden and you say, well, I hope this stuff grows. You know, if you don't cultivate it, if you don't plant it in rows, if you don't cover it over and do what the directions say to do for that seed to grow, it probably won't. Uh, there's a lot of things that can happen. Now, I've sown some grass seed out on bare spots, and I didn't take the rake, and I rake it up so it had little grooves in the ground, and then sow the seed, and then go back and rake it again. I didn't do that. And I watched one time when I did that on a piece of dry ground that needed some grass growth. And I watched it, and I found out the birds knew that I planted that seed. And I looked out there one day, and here was about a half a dozen birds over there just having a feast. Pluck, pluck, pluck. They were picking up all those seeds as fast as I threw them out there. Mm -hmm. Well, the point is, when we know we're going to sow seed, we better prepare the prepare ahead of time for the sowing of that seed if we expect it to grow and to give us a harvest. Now, that's in the physical realm. Well, the same thing is true in the, in the spiritual realm. That's why I think when we're going to witness to somebody, we, we did a series called Divine Appointments. Uh, if you hadn't watched that one or don't know anything about it, call Dan over there at the cable, uh, the community producers, and tell him you want to see the series on, uh, on that, and, and he'll dig it out and make sure you get to see it. Well, that's one thing for preparing uh, for seed to be sown is make sure that you're in the right place at the right time. Now, you can plant seed for a garden. Uh, in a lot of places where a garden won't grow. Now, we live in the timber, so we have only certain places that we can plant a garden where it gets enough sunshine to even do anything. Well, that's part of this preparing. Now, obviously, uh, having divine appointment to, to do the sowing is one aspect of it, but also prayer ahead of time, both for you and for the person that's going to be sown to, needs to take place. Now, there's still one more that we need to do, because if you don't remove the influences of the devil on that person's life, you may go share truth with him and sow it in all sincerity and feel like you did your praying, praying adequately and you feel like, well, God really wanted me to go talk to that person. If he's still bound up or she's still bound up with the devil's blindness, then it, the, the ground is not prepared to hear the truth. Now, with all that being said, do you want to add anything to that or highlight on any of that before we move on to another section here? Because this section you read is just talking about preparation, you know, the different kinds of ground where you throw the seeds out. Uh, we have had relatives that we've prayed for for years that just kind of ignored the fact that we were sharing the good news with them. Stony ground, mm -hmm. hard ground, not prepared. Well, there again, uh, we, we're all familiar with people who have, uh, I, I have in my mind, let's put it this way, I have in my mind a particular church, and, uh, and I've been familiar with this church for a lot of years, and there has been a lot of sowing going on, 
uh, some some better sowed than others, but there's been a lot of sowing. You know, there's been there may have been a Sunday or two when it was too cold or something that happened. You know that there, there wasn't a, a church service that went on, but for the most part, there's been a church service there for 50 years. Um, eight or ten times out of that 50 years maybe that there hasn't been a service on every Sunday and yet you look at the people and their lives in that church and you say well okay how, how much benefit has this been to them mm -hmm. and uh, and I'm sure that there are other situations where where that's going on as well uh, and so so here's where it is you know the, the, the word is going forth but it's it's not being fruitful it's not accomplishing uh, it's not creating a, an abundant overcoming life in the lives of the people there that are hearing it for uh, several varying reasons. There again, it may be a lack of prayer, it may be a lack of preparation, it may just be a lack of taking, as you said, taking that authority over the situations that are, that are there to allow it to come forth and to produce like it should. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> should we go on to the next? And that just kind of highlights yep. what we've been Let's talking about. Slide on down to you want me to read it or you're going to read it? Oh, I can. Okay. When you're sowing seed, the ground has to be the right kind of ground, and it has to be prepared for the seed. This passage of Scripture shows us several examples of the kind of ground into which the seed of the Word of God was sown. If you're going to have a garden, you look for the best ground that you have on your property. You don't go to the sandiest ground and grow your good garden, you, but to the best ground for that type of seed that you're planting. You don't look for a rocky mountaintop to plant radish seeds. You won't get a good crop. The same thing is true when we plant the Word of God. We have to plant God's Word in the ground that is good. There are different kinds of ground relevant to different kinds of people and their receptiveness to the Word. To plant the spiritual seed of the Word of God, we have to do it with preparation of prayer. When we pray before we plant the seeds, the Holy Spirit will tell us where to plant the seeds and where not to plant the seeds because the ground must be properly prepared. If you try to witness to somebody who isn't ready for your witness, it will be like throwing your seeds on stony ground. They aren't going to receive it. To successfully plant the seeds in the good ground, you have to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you to the people who will be ready to receive the words that you have to share with them. They will be good ground. Some people will be all tied up in the lust of the flesh and other things. You can sow into people who are receptive, but you have to be willing to receive but they have to be willing to receive it and to do something with it. It becomes their responsibility after the seed has been sown into them. A lot of times we just go out and witness to all kinds of people, not realizing that some of our seed is going to be totally wasted. Jesus tells us to go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is all well and good, but we need to have the prayer preceding our going out to plant the seed. And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifest, neither is there anything kept secret that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Mark four twenty one through 23. Well, uh, I'm sure you had some thoughts on that. I do. <laughs> I'll let you go first. Oh. Here, I was going to be nice and say, well, you go ahead. Uh, here again, we, we we have to be receptive to uh, the moving of the Spirit of God uh, when we are sharing. But we, we have to have a, we have to have the right attitude as we go to minister uh, to believe that those things which we are you know, we we have to believe that we're going to receive a harvest when we sow, mm -hmm. um, which is one of the reasons I think that a lot of Christians don't sow, is because uh, they have never actually seen a harvest or never ever uh, seen anybody come to the Lord, and uh, and one of the reasons why they haven't is because they haven't sown enough, for one reason. Mm -hmm. uh, you you, you got to keep sowing until you till you get a harvest in, in some people. Uh, and the, the other thing is they haven't known how to properly pray or or properly prayed uh, to see that ground prepared to the right place and then to produce that harvest. And uh, so it's, um, you know, a lot well, of things in my, my thoughts on this were on the flip side of this. Uh, you're already a Christian. Uh, this is talking about sowing the word, and this isn't just sowing the word into the non-believer. It's also sowing the word into other Christians. That's true too. Uh, we as we as Christian people, 
uh, we haven't arrived yet. I mean, there's still things in the Bible that we have to learn. And the way you learn them is by having some pastor, some teacher, some evangelist, some prophet, some evan uh, <clears throat> apostle sharing the revelation knowledge that they have gained and, and sow it into your life so that you may have an opportunity to grow to a higher level spiritually than where you were. Mm -hmm. and, and that's another kind of sowing. And, and that probably... I would say <clears throat> might be easier sowing than the going into the world where the, the, the non-believers at and trying to win them into Jesus. Because here at least they have the same Holy Spirit. If they're truly born again, they have the same Holy Spirit who is our teacher actually. So when they hear some revelation knowledge coming from another person, which they may or may not have already heard, uh, the, the Holy Spirit then can, can work with them regarding that seed that's sown as to how to grow up in their lives so they can benefit from it and they can have the harvest of knowing that additional revelation that has been presented. And, and I I have been given revelations of the Word and I've gone back to the Lord and I say, Lord, who am I supposed to share this with? Who wants to know this? Who can benefit from this revelation? Now, some revelations you get, uh, <laughs> like Charlie Cap, Dr. Cap said, he says, uh, you know, he likes to go in and, and kill the sacred cows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, uh, sometimes when you go in to kill the sacred cows, which he refers to as, as traditions of men or wrong teaching, wrong doctrine, or whatever, maybe maybe the doctrine just stops short of where it could have gone to. Uh, you may be in a church that, that they don't never bring in an outside speaker. So you never hear anything new. It's just whatever the preacher preaches that week. And he may be in a, in a rut where it's, you know, just over a period of time, it's the same messages back and back and back. And so you're not growing spiritually. Well, uh, you need to grow spiritually. And if it means going to outside meetings to get some food, spiritual food, then do it. Uh, I'm not saying walk away from that church. I'm just saying if you know that you have a need to learn more spiritual things, and that's what this program is all about, <clears throat> then you need to present yourself in that sort of situation. Kendall and I have gone to other meetings to hear what the guy had to say because we knew that he had revelation knowledge and maybe could help us in an area or maybe enlarge us in an area where we already had revelation, but we needed to expand it and make it grow more in our own lives. Uh, and that's the flip side of this coin that I was talking about. We're talking about sowing this, the word. Uh, sometimes the sowing of the word is to other Christians to help them grow mm -hmm. because we're talking about growing and then harvest uh, and you you sow the seed but you don't go out the next day and get the harvest there's a time period in there and it's patience is involved here where you sow the seed you exercise your patience and faith and you and you let the Holy Spirit and and your attending other meetings and gaining knowledge of that word before you can get the harvest of it uh, farming is a perfect example of sowing, growing, and harvest. A farmer don't go out in the spring of the year and throw his corn seeds in the in the ground and then the next week go out and dig them up to see if they're growing. He grows them by faith and then he waits and when, the, when they've come up he'll go back and he'll side dress them with fertilizer. He may go in and wipe out the, the weeds that's trying to grow with them because uh, the weed seeds were sown also and, and not by him necessarily. But but to get a good harvest that he wants, he's going to take care of the growing part of it, which he's going to exercise patience, demand the rain that he needs. Now, we talked about rain, and uh, we'll talk about rain more as we go through because rain is, is absolutely a part of growing, and rain in the Bible is referred to a lot of times as the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Uh, the river of life is referred to in the Bible, and, and that's God's Word flowing to you and through you for growing up. Now, <laughs> you got some more you want to jump in, or should we move on to some, some other paragraphs here? Well, I guess just one thing, uh, you know, as we're reading here, it says, uh, having heard, having heard, having heard. Having heard. And uh, one of the things that, that uh, well, was, we're just meeting with some people here lately, and, and, and the, one of the people said, you know, I had, I had gotten away from reading the Bible out loud. Mm-hmm. And, Easy to do. And she said, I, I, I realized that I'd gotten away from that. And, and it doesn't say that faith cometh by reading. Which is true. It says faith cometh by hearing. 
and hearing by the word of God. And uh, so she said, so I went back to reading reading out loud. And, and there is something that is different about reading. Now, you can gain knowledge from reading and reading quietly and silently. You can, you can do that. But there is there's something about reading the word, reading it out loud, and, and hearing it as you're reading it uh, that will just kind of amplify it. And, well, so, Romans says faith comes something. by hearing and hearing by the word. Amen. And you can't hear it if you're just reading it with your eyes and mentally to yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> if you have the word into and meditating on the word, which is a form of prayer, that's good, but that's not what Kendall's referring to. Kendall's referring to to, to feeding your to feeding your sowed, sown word that was put in you so it can grow uh, so eventually you can get a harvest out of that. It uh, may even help your ability to read. It may help your ability to read. Oh. And sometimes we need some glass to assist us to oh. <laughs> get everything in focus so we can read. <laughs> you ready to jump on here or you want me to read something? Um... Jesus, Jesus is saying that you are a candle and you have to be put up on a candlestick so that you can be seen in another way of preparing the spiritual soil before you go to share the word <clears throat> you have to be seen as the same kind of person as the word says you are sharing if you are sharing about Jesus love and his forgiveness but you have within yourself a heart filled with bitterness you'll turn off people off because they will not see the love of God in you they won't see the candle as it's lit. They may see a candle, but it won't be lit. And he said unto them, Take heed what you hear. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that hath to him shall be given more, and to he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he has. Mark 4, 24-25. We have to be aware of what we're putting into our spirits so that when we speak forth, we will speak forth words which are which God wants us to speak forth, not what the world says. Verse 26 of Mark chapter 4 says, And he said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground. Jesus is showing us another aspect of this next parable, which is relevant to the sowing of the word. This man is sowing seeds. Verse 27 says, And it should be sleep and raise night and day, and the seeds should spring forth and grow. And he knoweth not how. But when you plant those seeds, your words are seeds, they are going to grow. People are going to receive them, and what, and then they will either meditate on them or get upset with you. Verse 28, For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, and after that the full corn in the ear. Jesus is going through the whole scenario of seed time and harvest. You plant the seed, you watch it grow, and then you will harvest it. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he put it in the sickle, the harvest is come. When it's time to harvest that which is sown, that which is grown up, then the harvest comes. When Christians grow up and mature, they become ripe for the kingdom of God. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? It's like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. Mark 4, 30 and 31. Jesus has begun another parable and is making another comparison on sowing and reaping. Take notice that in the, these verses, he's making an anaglory about the physical planting of seeds in the earth to the spiritual planting in verse 14, where he says, The sower sows the word. But when it is sown, it groweth up, becometh greater than all the herbs, and shoots out great branches, so the fowls of the air may lodge in the shadow of it. Notice now that he's talked about the three aspects of sowing and reaping. The sowing of it, the speaking it forth, the growing of it, and the harvesting of it after it has matured, grown up, and is ready and ripened to the point of harvest. Okay, you want to jump on any of that? No, I just, uh, the comment that, that, it, that you do need to do it all. One of the reasons why a lot of people haven't, haven't had any harvest is because they've never sown anything. <laughs> Right. There was one there that, and we're talking about the candlestick. Uh, you can't be a light to other people if you can't be a light to yourself. Uh, so if you're not taking in things that can help you, uh, how are you going to show forth things that can help others? Uh, and, and I see that as part of our light. Uh, there's other, we can go along with other things there too, but I'm not, I don't want to get into that right now. That'd be chasing a rabbit. 
Let's read on. All right. Tell me to. Go ahead. Several analogies can be made here regarding the physical life which we live, the spiritual life which we live, and the world. In his word, God says that he desires all come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Jesus gave, Jesus gave us the commandment to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's the sowing of the word of God into the spiritual side to get people set free from the kingdom of darkness and to bring them into the kingdom of God. Mark 4.26 says, So is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground. And verse 27 says, And he should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring up and grow, he knoweth not how. In these verses, Jesus is talking about physical seed. When you plant that seed in the ground, you don't go and dig it up every day to see what it's doing. You won't have a, pro a garden if you do that. You plant that seed in the ground and you cover it up. And then you wait for time to pass and you let your seed in the ground do their thing. Their thing is the seed gets planted and it dies. The life inside the seed grows in the ground and sends forth the plant. It is the same over on the spiritual side. When you plant the seed into the ground, it will stay there and grow. Make sure that you plant the seed in the ground that has been prepared through prayer or intercession. However, the Holy Spirit leads you in your heart prior to the planting of that seed. When you go and just scatter your seed abroad like a shotgun, blam, just throwing it all over the place, you're going to have a hit and miss process. Some of it may grow and some of it may not. Some of it may grow the wrong way. Mark 4 verse 15 says that Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. Any comments on that? Mm, I think that pretty well self-explanatory, wasn't it? Yeah, it does a pretty good job. Now he that ministers seed to the sower and both minister bread for the, your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes us through us cause through us thanksgiving to God. Second Corinthians nine, ten, and eleven. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, who is he that ministers seed to the sower? Ultimately, God gives us the seed, the word of God, to sow into spiritual world, spiritual things and physical seeds to sow into the physical world for physical things. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both ministers bread for her food. Jesus is referred to as the bread of life. And multiply your seed sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness. And more the word that is sown into you and grows up and matures, the more aware you are of your righteousness to God and the better person you're going to be in the kingdom of God. In turn, you may be ministering seed to somebody else to grow so that they can also grow and prosper and become ripe, mature, and harvestable. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, we are not supposed to live in poverty as Christians. We are supposed to live with bountifulness, enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes us thanksgiving to God. Because as this bounty comes towards us, we realize that it isn't us, but God who has given it to us through the seeds that have been planted and growing up that we've done, knowing who we are in Christ. I, I want to add something there because our pastor's been in the last few months has been trying to make the congregation of which we're some realize who we are in Christ because if you don't know who you are in Christ you're not going to be able to uh, grow and manifest to others as Jesus would because you won't know you'll be ignorant. So I think this growing is part of gaining knowledge of the seed that was sown. But I think it's very important that we have uh, adequate knowledge as to who we are in Christ. He's, Jesus said we were bought with a price. Well, he was the one that paid the price. Uh, you know, I've said a few things. You're going to wipe <laughs> wipe down the end of this one. We'll, we'll wind this, up. this half hour sure went awful fast. I don't know. You, are you cheating on the clock out there? <laughs> I know, mine's going the same way. Uh, here again, you know, sowing, growing, and harvesting. And, and each one of them is an important and yet entirely separate uh, operation yes. in, the, in the, the course of things. And it is spiritually. We need to spiritually sow into our life and the lives around about them, uh, you know, in, in various different ways. Uh, sometimes it's going to be by money. Sometimes it's going to be by giving other things. Uh, and, and we need to sow into both Christians and non-Christians. Yes. And then we need to allow that growth to come and, and prepare for that time of harvest. So uh, wherever you're at in that life, we, we will pray for you that you would come into an opportunity to grow and to mature 
and give you pra- we give God praise for it in Jesus' name.